Janabala ba girid Yashoda nandana prajajana ranjana Yashoda nandana prajajana ranjana Yamuna tira vannachari Yamuna tira vannachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhakirid Bharatari Gopi Jana Bala Bhakirid Bharatari Yashoda nandana prajajana ranjana Yashoda nandana prajajana ranjana Yamuna tira vanachari Yamuna tira vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhakirid Bharatari Gopi Jana Bala Bhakirid Bharatari Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नेताय गोर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नेताय गोर हरि बो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद गोल प्रेमानंदे जय ओम विष्णु पाद परमहंस परिव्रज आचार्य अष्टर सत श्री श्रीमद His divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedan Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki, His confounder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhukta Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki, Nam Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki, Premshikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasa de Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina, Shyamakun Radha Kun, Giri Govardhan Ki, Vrindavan Maya Purdam Ki, Ganga Maya Yamuna Maya Ki, Tosi Maharani Bhakti Devi Ki, Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan Ki, Most auspicious Avirbhav Mahotsava Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupad Ki. All glories to assembled devotees. All glories to assembled devotees. All glories to assembled devotees. All glories Sri Guru Sri Goranga. All glories Srila Prabhupad. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane. Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachadeshatarine So today being the appearance day of His Divine Grace Sri Srimad Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada we will speak about His life and His mission. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha 
Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Karo Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Karun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Scha Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagadpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Korange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishapanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bayevacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar shri vasadegor bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So it was in the year 1874 at this time that Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati made his appearance in this world. He was born in the holy place, Jagannath Puri. And those of you who have been to Jagannath Puri, you must have seen the birthplace because there's a Gaudiamat temple there today. Initially, of course, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati appeared in the family of the personality we know as Bhaktivinoda Thakur. At that time, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the magistrate in the district of Jagannath Puri. And he was given a residence there just on the main road between the temple of Lord Jagannath and the uh, Gundicha temple, where Jagannath goes every year. So it was at that place Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati appeared. And initially he was given the name Bhimo Prasad, the mercy of Bhimala. And the pra Bhimala is named for Lord Shiva's wife. So Bimala Prasad appeared, I think he was the third or either the third or the fourth son of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who had a large family. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had 11 children. He wanted all of his children to help him in propagating the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he trained them like that. So Bimal Prasad at the time of his birth, it was noted that when he came from the womb of his mother, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck like a brahmana thread. So that was an auspicious sign. And then a few, some months later, at the time of the Rathiatra, the Rathiatra car came past their home and uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's wife, Bhagavati, she took the opportunity to bring the child onto the chariot of Lord Jagannath. And she placed the baby at the feet of Lord Jagannath to get blessings. 
it's a custom. When we go on Rathiatras in different parts of the world, people who may have a very young child, they may pass the child onto the chariot to put the, the baby at the feet of the deity to give blessings to the child. So when Bhimo Prasad was placed at the feet of the deity, it was noted that a garland of flowers fell off onto the child. So that was another very auspicious omen indicating that this is a special child. Then, later on, as the child began to grow, when he was only a few years old, his father had brought some mangoes to be offered to the family deity. But before they could be offered, the child had eaten one, some of the mangoes. And so when the father came and saw that some of the mangoes had been honored by the child without offering, then he mildly rebuked the child and told, Oh, you have taken before it was offered to Krishna. He told the child, this is an offense. And so when the child heard like that, he made the vow that in the future I will not accept mangoes. And throughout his whole life, he did not accept mangoes. And whenever sometimes the devotees would bring mango, of course here in Bengal, there's a lot of mangoes, and they can be very nice, very tasty. So people would bring mangoes. Prabhupada said mango is the king of fruits. But when they would bring to Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he would say, no, I cannot take, I am an offender. So this was his determination. From childhood, he showed his staunch determination for the service of the Lord. So the young child grew up to be a very dear child to his father. He became his personal secretary. Because Bhaktivinoda Thakur was not only a magistrate, but he was also a great devotee, and he was a preacher, and he was writing books, and he wrote many wonderful songs and poems, which we take the benefit of today. So Bhaktisiddhanta, or Bhimo Prasad, at that time, he would help his father. And he would, of course, there was no computers or anything. Everything was handwritten. And he would help his father to keep these different uh, notes and the different writings and poems which he'd done. And at the same time, he would also be reading and studying himself. When his father would go traveling, Bhimo Prasad would go with him. And he would take the opportunity to research the different religious traditions. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur encouraged his son. He said, you know, I'm your seminal father. You have to get initiation from somebody. You have to, I cannot give you initiation. You have to take initiation from someone. So it was arranged. He said, there's uh, actually Bhaktis Bhimo Prasad had no desire to take initiation because he had so much faith in his own father that his own father was a spotless, pure devotee, a very great devotee. We see Bhakti Vinod Thakur. The title Thakur is given to very, very elevated, pure devotees. So he was serving his father, but his father wanted him to get initiation. So who to take initiation from? Because there were so many sahajyas. There were so many people who were not presenting the proper message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who were just simply deviating and creating disturbance. There was one person when Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhimal Prasad were in Jagannath Puri 
at that time, there was one Babaji who used to come and he would listen to the lectures of Bhimo Prasad. That Bhimo Prasad would give lectures in those days on the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So there was this one Babaji coming and they thought, well, Babaji is nice. But then later on, they found out what the Babaji was teaching and they were shocked. They found out the Babaji was telling his followers, don't chant Hare Krishna out loud. Just chant it in your mind. And he gave them another mantra to chant, a mantra which he had made himself. He'd made up a mantra. And the mantra was this mantra because he himself was a popular Babaji known to the people and he had followers and he told them, no, no, we don't chant the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is pure. We will just chant in our mind Hare Krishna mantra. He told them like that. And he wanted them to uh, chant this mantra which he had. And then he, he did another deviation which he had also. He introduced a thing which is known as Saki Beki. Saki Beki. It means taking on the dress of the Sakis, of the Gopis. So he would have men dress up as gopis. And then he would tell them, Oh, you are Lolita Saki. Like this. And, the, you know, the, the man was actually a conditioned soul. But he's saying, Oh, now I'm Lolita Saki. You know, and it was completely nonsense. Nowhere did we find this in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or the Goswamis. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati preached very strongly against this. And of course Bhaktivinoda Thakur also, they pointed out that this is a deviation. And they gave evidence also that Rupa Goswami has written in the Chaitanya Asktikam that Lord Chaitanya loudly chanted the holy name of the Lord. And so it's Rupa Goswami had personally witnessed the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he had described the activities of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Chaitanya Astikam. And he describes there that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu loudly chants the holy name. And they pointed out to this foolish Babaji that the chanting of the holy name is done in Japa and in Kirtan. And of the two, Kirtan is even more powerful than Japa. And they pointed out that no conditioned soul should ever try to imitate eternally liberated souls like the Sakis, like Lalita Saki, who is an, an expansion of Srimati Radharani. It is just a great offense. But the Babaji would not accept. And he went on propagating his nonsense. And he got followers somehow. So it was very disgusting to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So, anyway, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he had to get initiation. And it, it, it was over here in Mayapur, when Bhaktivinoda Thakur was here in Mayapur, he had made his residence over at Swarup Ganj, and Gorki Das Babaji was coming to visit there. And sometimes he would even stay there, because he took Bhaktivinoda Thakur as his Shiksha Guru. Actually, Gorki Das Babaji had been initiated as a Babaji, by a personality called Bhagavad Das Babaji, who was a direct disciple of Jagannath Das Babaji. So this Gorkishor Das Babaji was coming and hearing from Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was also present at the time, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur pointed out, he said, this is a very good person, that he will make a good guru for you. 
Now, the, the interesting thing is that Gorky Shodas Babaji was almost literate. He did not have hardly any education. But still, somehow, he liked to read. He would try to read Prartana, which is a book of prayers by Naratam. And he would, try to, he would also read Prema Bhakti Chandrika. These were two books which Gorky Shodas Babaji kept with him. And he, but he was almost illiterate. He'd never had any formal education. So there, on the other hand, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was a great scholar. He was still called Bhimo Prasad. He was actually a highly educated person, a, a great scholar. He had been offered to take the chair at the Calcutta University and to be the professor of astrology because he was so learned in the science of astrology and he had written a wonderful commentary on a book called Surya Siddhanta which is a very important treatise on astrology. So Bhimo Prasad was very highly educated uh, fluent in Bengali and English and Sanskrit. So, he was fluent in these very important languages and he knew all, all of the Shastras. He studied deeply all of the Shastras because even as a young child, when he was only seven years old, he already had memorized the whole Bhagavad Gita. And he could not only quote the verses of Bhagavad Gita, but he could explain the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita to people. So he was highly educated. So when he approached Gorkishordas Babaji for initiation, Gorkishordas Babaji said, Oh, no, no, how I can initiate you? You're such a learned person. Look at me. I'm, I'm an uneducated fool. How I can ever become your spiritual master? Anyway, uh, Srila Bhimo Prasad begged him, No, no, please, I want to get initiation. I realized the few, I've been foolish, I've spent so much time studying all of this worldly knowledge. Actually, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was such a learned person, he was called a walking encyclopedia. He could speak on any subject, any topic anybody wanted to bring, he could speak on it and debate with them. He was so learned. And so Gorky Chodas Babaji said, look, no, how I can become your spiritual master? Bhimal Prasad said, no, no, I need to get initiation. You should, please, please, you have to accept me. So he said, well, I will ask Mahaprabhu. So then, after some time, they met again. And so he said, Bhimal Prasad again said, did you ask Mahaprabhu? Oh no, I forgot to ask him. So then he begged, please, please, I want, please, it's very, please, I need to get initiation. Uh, all right, all right, I will ask. So next time they met, did you ask him? Well, I asked him, but he did not give me any reply. So then Bhima Prasad became very grave. And he quoted from the song which we sing, Guru Dev. Kripa Bindu Dia, uh, how does it go? Uh, uh, at the end of the song it says, Karana uh, Hoile Gandhiya Gandhiya Pranana Raki Boara. Karana Hoile Gandhiya Gandhiya Pranana Raki Boara. That if you are not merciful to me, then I will simply weep and I will not maintain my life any longer. So when Gorkishore Das Babaji heard that he's ready to give up his life, 
And he, then he saw Bhimal, Bhimal Prasad was shedding tears and crying, feeling himself helpless and really seriously contemplating giving up his life. Then Gorky Shodras Babaji said, all right, go take your bath in the, in the nearby river and come back. And he went, took bath and came back and then he initiated him. And he gave him the name uh, Vrishabhanavi Devi Daitaya Das. Vrishabhanavi Devi Daitaya Das. Meaning, one who is the, the servant of the lover of Srimati Radharani. Beautiful name, eh? So that was in the year 1900, he was given initiation. At that time he was already 26 years of age and he had become initiated. So they were preaching, he was pre with Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he would preach and he would often give lectures. But he was very aggressive. He was called Nish Simha Guru, Simha Guru, like a lion. He would preach very strongly and very forcefully because he was very unhappy to see all the deviations and all the nonsense which was going on in the name of propagating the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Particularly, he was preaching against like this Babaji. I mentioned how this Babaji was teaching people to do Saki Beki, become a gopi, dress like a Saki, even though you're a conditioned soul, take on the mood of the gopi. The proper mood is take on the mood of Rupa Goswami. You want to do something good, Take on the mood of the Goswamis and chant the holy name and study the scriptures. Don't just become sahajyas. Sahajyas mean they take everything very cheap. And they think it's so easy to become a paramahamsa and to become the liberated souls. Prabhupada often, our own Srila Prabhupada often warned us, be very careful about Radha Kund, because in Radha Kund there are many sahajyas that they take on the dress of Paramahamsas. Paramahamsas give up all the symbols of Varnashram. They take off their Brahmin threads and they cut the Sika and they don't carry the danda, they give up, the, they, this is the Babaji, because Babaji means Paramahamsa, that one is actually on the stage of Paramahamsa, the topmost level of devotional service, completely absorbed in service to Krishna through chanting the holy name. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, no, well, he hadn't taken that name yet, that name actually came when he took sannyas. So sannyas initiation came later. I think it was 1918 when he took sannyas. He took initiation in the year 1900. So he was serving his father still. His father trained him in book publishing, in proofreading, in editing different things like this, preparation for his future, that he could go on publishing books, writing books, and even he began publishing a newspaper, a daily newspaper. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was preaching aggressively and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur thought it was not very good because it was making some agitation, people were offended. So he told him, he said, for, for the time being good, you should go to the yoga peeth. You go to the yoga peeth and do some bhajan there, chant the holy name. 
So at that time, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati came to live here in Mayapur and he lived near the Yoga Peeth and he took a vow to chant the holy name one billion times. One billion times. And in order to do that, he calculated he will have to chant, like Haridas Thakur, three lakh names every day. Three lakh names means 192 rounds every day. And he will have to do it for nine years. So for a period of nine years, every day he was chanting 192 rounds. You know, sometimes we do 64 rounds, and when you finish 64 rounds in one day, you go, Whoa. you know, you, it's, you know, wow, I did it. You know, you do one day, you think you're really doing well. Could you imagine? 192 rounds every day for nine years he was doing. Of course, Haridas Thakur was doing every day, but it helps us to understand what was the spiritual position of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur? That he was such a great soul, that as a young man, he was chanting all these rounds. He, was at, he took that vow, he was like 30 years of age, 26, and he's chanting, you know, but we're very passionate at that time, we're very passionate, we'll run around, we're very active, and that was why Prabhupada engaged so many of the devotees, he engaged us all in book distribution. Because he saw our mood, he saw our passion, he knew we couldn't just sit down and chant Hare Krishna. We can't do it. He gave us things to do. Go and build temples. Go open Krishna conscious centers around the world. <clears throat> and distribute, distribute books. So, <coughs> everything according to time and circumstance. So, Prabhupada engaged us in that way. But Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, it was a different time. India was more rural, had not developed so much economically or industrially, although it was coming. And certainly, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati saw the need to go to the cities to preach. So after completing his vow of chanting one billion names, at that, during that time he had acquired some disciples. He had not yet taken sannyas, but he already had some disciples. And he explains it's actually the duty of a Vaishnava to accept disciples. Because without accepting disciples, the line of disciplic succession cannot continue. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, even before his sannyasa initiation, he'd already started taking disciples. He, he took... Uh, 1914, you had the disappearance of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He lost his seminal father, the person who he was most dedicated to. And then in 1915, he lost Gorkishore Das Babaji, his own Diksha Guru. So it was a big loss. He lost both his fathers, the seminal father and the spiritual father. They both departed from the world. But they had both encouraged him to preach. So he was thinking about their desire, and in that mood, he decided that he should take sannyas. How, however, who to take sannyas from? Because he has no god-brother. Gorky Shodas Babaji initiated only one disciple. He was the only disciple of Gorky Shodas Babaji. So he has no god brother. There's nobody there to give him sannyas initiation. So how does he take sannyas? So, so he he went in, to the altar at the 
a temple there in, in, in Mayapur here. He went inside the altar, closed the curtains, and he sat down in front of the photograph of his own spiritual master. Now I have heard from the Gaudiya devotees, they taught, one of the Gaudiya devotees personally told me, he said, he didn't just sit in front of the photo. He said his own spiritual master actually appeared to him in a spiritual form and gave him sannyas and told him, now go and preach. But generally we say he sat in front of the photo of his spiritual master and took sannyas in that way. It was a very special situation because there were no god brothers, there was nobody else there to give him sannyas. So he simply, and why did he take sannyas? We should understand that a person does not accept sannyas just simply out of pride or just simply for recognition. But the mood of accepting sannyas is for service, to do more service for the Supreme Lord. So in that mood, to expand his preaching and to do more service, he accepted the renounced order of life. However, there was always opposition. There was opposition to his initiations. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, at that time when he took sannyas, he took that name, Siddhanta Sarasati, and he was giving initiation. And some of the people who were coming for initiation were from Brahmana families, and some were from Sudra families, and he would initiate everyone. But the smarter Brahmins would object. The smarter Brahmins have, had, they have a long controversy, a, a long criticism against Vaishnavism. Even in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we had uh, Vaishnava Acharyas like Naratam Das Thakur and also Shamananda Pandit, Srinivas Acharya, they were initiating. Now, Shamananda Pandit was not born in a Brahmana family, but he initiated Rasikananda, Rasikananda was from a Brahmana family, but he accepted Diksha from Shamananda Pandit, although Shamananda Pandit was not a Brahman by birth. But he was a great devotee and he could understand he's a great devotee. And similarly, Naratam Das Thakur was also not born in a Brahmana family by birth, but he initiated people from Brahmana families, people like Ganga Narayan Chakravarti and Ramakrishna Bhattacharya, they were two prominent disciples of Naratam Das Thakur and they accepted initiation from him. So there, there was objection. The smarter Brahmins were complaining. These people, how he can do it? He's not a Brahmin. How can he initiate? How can he do this? They, they claim that Unless you're born in the Brahmana family, you cannot give initiation and you cannot give Brahman initiation and you cannot worship the deity and you cannot perform sacrifice like doing the yajna, doing the agnihotri, doing a fire sacrifice. They say this is the work of the Brahmins. Brahmana, and they say Brahmana means simino Brahman, by birth only. But we argue against this on the basis of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which comes particularly in the case of Sanatana Goswami, who describes that anybody can become a Brahmana if they're properly trained and initiated by a bona fide spiritual teacher. Then what is the qualification of the bona fide spiritual teacher? That also has to be considered bona fide spiritual teacher Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Ramananda Rai Kiba Vipra Kiba Nasi Shudra Keni Nai Ye Krishna Tadvavet Se Guru Hoi that 
it does not matter where you are born. The birth is not the important criterion. What is important is that you have the proper training and temperament for Brahminical life. And you should know the science of Krishna. Ye Krishna Tattva Vit. Krishna Tattva. You have to know the science of Krishna. Then you can become spiritual teacher. It does not matter if you are Sudra or Brahman or renunciate, whatever position you are in, in the material world. That is not the criterion. But if you know the science of Krishna, then you can give the initiation. And people think, some people think even the Brahman thread, oh, people just wear the Brahman thread, they think they are better than others. But that is not the purpose of the Brahmana thread. The Brahmana thread is given to people to show that they have had the mercy of the lotus feet of a spiritual master. And we chant the Gayatri. Gayatri mantra is recited to remind us that we are eternal servants of the Supreme Lord. Not that we're better than others but it's to remind us that we are the eternal servant of the Supreme Lord. And so these things were not taught. It was Srila Bhakta Siddhanta Sarasati who was teaching these to the world so that today people can accept. But at that time there was a lot of opposition. It, Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, the work of my Guru Maharaj was to challenge the Kaskoswamis. Kaskoswamis. They say, unless you're born a Brahmin, you cannot be a Brahmin. They say, the seminal birth is important. We say, no, this is not in the scriptures. It's nowhere in the scriptures. Chatur Varnam Maya Shristam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Krishna created the divisions of society according to Guna and Karma, not Janma. That is their concoction. That they wanted to take advantage, unfair advantage, and exploit the people. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. In the mood of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and in the mood of the Goswamis of Vrindavan and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he preached against the caste Goswamis that this is all wrong, that anybody can worship the deity if they're properly trained and initiated. It's not birth which is the criterion. But there were uh, people were challenging. They had Parikrama here in Mayapur and they came at one point to the Ghat and they, there was a big procession, many, many devotees and even they had a big elephant and what happened? There was a gang of people, they stoned, they threw stones on the devotees. They all got pelted with these stones. It was an outrage that they attacked a peaceful demonstration, a peaceful march. The devotees were peacefully performing Parikrama and Sankirtan and they got stoned. And then when they came to Vrindavan, when Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati brought his devotees to Vrindavan, all the shopkeepers closed the shops. They didn't want to sell anything to them. They said, you're giving the, you're making Brahmins from people who are not Brahmin. You're letting these Sudras become Brahmins. We don't want to encourage you. We're not selling anything to you. They closed the shops. What to do? They had to go on regardless. They had to tolerate so many of these things to establish the Krishna consciousness movement. And there were people they said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is not the Supreme Lord. Why are you worshipping him? He's a devotee. He said himself, he's a devotee. He said, 
Gopi Bhartu Pada Kamalayor Dasa Dasan. He never said he's the Supreme Lord. How are you putting him on the altar as a, as a God? They challenged like this. They said, where, where does it say he's God? So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati had to prove to them. He had to teach them the scriptures. He quoted Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna Varnam Tevishap, Krishnam Sango Pangastra Parshadam. Like this, that in the Kali Yuga, the Lord appears, not blackish, a Krishna. He comes in the golden color and he's performing Sankirtan Yagya. Srila Bhakti said, then they said, well that's Srimad Bhagavatam, that's Shruti. Where, that's Smriti. Where does it say in the Shruti? We want Shruti. Because they're smarter Brahmins, you see. Smarter Brahmins, they don't accept the Smriti. They don't accept Srimad Bhagavatam. They don't accept Bhagavad Gita. They say, where does it say in the Shruti? So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he knows all the scriptures. And he quotes from do you know the Chaitanya Upanishad in the Atarva Veda? <laughs> and he quoted from the Atarva Veda. Atarva Veda means one of the four Vedas. And in the four Vedas, there's this Chaitanya Upanishad. And he quoted a verse there where Lord Brahma is speaking. And he's saying that, I will tell you a secret. In the, he said, I will appear on the banks of the Janavi in the town of Navadvi. And I will, I will give love of God to the world. I will come in my two-armed form and I will give bhakti to the world. Stated in the Atharva Veda. It's also, there's another verse also in Sri Tejvatara Upanishad. Also, there are evidences there. But these rascals, they were saying, no, it's not. And we said, look, it's right here. It's in the scriptures. You want Shruti? I'm showing you Shruti. They were defeated. They had no answer. Nobody could reply to his arguments. So in this way, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he did so much for us that we can enjoy today that we have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gornitai deities around the world and we are chanting also Gora Mantra. Gora Gayatri Mantra. They said, oh, Gora Gayatri, no, we shouldn't chant that. That's, it's not Vedic. It's not. But he showed them, no, it's there. It's in the Vedas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name is there in the Vedas. And so we're getting the benefit. We chant Gora Gayatri. We worship Panchatattva and Gornitai all around the world. But there were so many obstacles. There were so many challenges. It was not easy. Just as Srila Prabhupada had to face difficulties to establish the Krishna conscious movement, in the times of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, the difficulties were even more. And he was preaching mainly in India. Although he did send people to the West, his real preaching was here in India. And he established uh, 64 different centers around India. I think more than 17 of them were here in Mayapur Dam itself. He established 17 centers just here in, Navad in Navadvip so that on Parikrama the devotees can see these different places and hear the pastimes. So he really did an intense labor and he was very very careful to guide his devotees. One interesting lila which takes place is that when the devotees were at uh, the temple of Shakshi Gopal over in Arissa, he saw that his followers, the people who were accompanying on the tour, they were grihastas and they were not giving any donations to the beggars. They were not giving alms to the beggars. And so later on he spoke about it. He said, you know, to give alms to the beggars is not karmakandi. 
Some people think that, oh, it's, this is karmakandi activity, just some pious activity to give donations, to give charity to the poor people, to the less fortunate people. He said, they are also, they are also part of God's family. And, of course, they are having, they may be in difficult times, they are poverty stricken, but it's the duty of all devotees to have compassion and to those who are well-to-do, that they should try to help the less fortunate people by giving charity. So sometimes, you know, people criticize that, oh, this is welfare pro, this is just karma kandi activity. But Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, it's, a, it's a, especially when you come in a holy place and the people who are there sitting outside the temples, you should try to give some kind of charity. Those of you who are well-to-do, don't be miserly. He said, if you don't give charity, then you become, you don't want to give to Krishna ultimately. You don't give to the parts and parcels of Krishna, and you won't give to Krishna either. <laughs> you just keep it for your own self, you just keep your wealth for your own self. So he didn't want that, he wanted to encourage that the people, devotees should be kind-hearted and charitable, give donations, feed the poor. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, actually there was another time uh, when there was a famine, there was a famine and they asked, the, the government had approached him for money. And he told him, no, he wouldn't give any. He said, he wouldn't give money for the government. He said, that's, he said, no, no, we have to use our funds for our temples, maintaining the temples. But Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was revolutionary. Another thing which he did was, he would wear sewn cloth. Now previously, sannyasis would never wear any sewn cloth they would simply wrap a piece of cloth around them. But he would go to meet different people. At the time he was preaching, India was under the rule of the British. So he would go to the important people, British people, and he wanted to dress respectably, and he put on a kurtar and sewn cloth. And in this way he went to see them. He didn't go barefooted, you know, sannyasis, the tradition, they would walk everywhere barefooted, but he would wear shoes and he would go to meet these British people. And he even had a car and he would go in his car to go to see these different people. And he would preach to them and he would get them to come out to Mayapur, all the way from Calcutta. Now, I remember coming out to Mayapur in the 1970s and I remember what it was like then, 50 years ago. It was no picnic, you know. The roads were really poor, really, really bad, difficult the whole way. And uh, you could imagine a hundred, a hundred and more years ago, what it must have been like. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was here and he was getting people, British people, to come out to Mayapur to see. And not just any ordinary people, but very important people with big positions in the government. He'd get them to come out to Mayapur and, and then he would show them the maps and he would establish the actual birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is here in Mayapur. So that was very important work which he was doing. And he was, but he was encouraging the the principle given by Rupa Goswami, which is Yukta Vairagya. Yukta Vairagya, not just Fogu Vairagya, not just false renunciation, but renunciation in relation to Krishna. To use everything in the service of Krishna, that is Yukta Vairagya. Just like we are using this technology to hear today, it's all uh, you could say this is materialistic. We are using these material things. But we are using them in the service of Krishna. And that is encouraged by Rupa Goswami. Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Uchate. 
Srila Rupa Goswami has described for us that actual renunciation is utilizing everything in the service of Lord Krishna. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he did that. He utilized everything for the service of Krishna. And particularly he was fond of the printing press, which he called the Brihad Madanga for printing books, because the book would go all over the world. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, his father, had sent books to Canada in 1896. 1896, he had sent books to Canada, and devotees went in the 1960s, and they found the books which Bhaktivinoda Thakur had sent. They went to McGill University in Canada, in Toronto. They found the books which had been sent there. So book distribution, very important, very powerful. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthiti liked so much to see books. And when people wrote articles, he would simply see how many times the word Krishna appeared there. And if the word Krishna was there, many times, print it. <laughs> that was the important thing. He liked to see the word Krishna there. And the daily newspaper was there. People were going, if they would sell even one or two newspapers, they would collect a few paisa. He would glorify them. Very good. You've done very well. He didn't like them just to go to the rich people. If somebody came back with big money, he said, no, this is not very good. You didn't go to poor people. You only go to the rich people. He encouraged, go everywhere. You come back, if you bring some rice, a little rice, a few vegetables, and some money as well. Oh, very good. You've done very nice. He liked the devotees to do that kind of preaching. This was the mood of the Gaudiya Mat. In those days, that was 1920s, right? He established the Gaudiya Mat. We know our own founder, Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, he got initiation. Well, he first met... Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, a hundred years ago this year, 1922. So there's a very big program today in Calcutta at the same place where Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati met Srila Prabhupada. Because Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was brought to Calcutta and they were arranging programs and it was at Oh, number one, Utadanga Junction Road. And now that property is property of ISKCON. And today there's a very big function there. A number of many senior devotees from the movement from around the world have come. And there's a very big program taking place at Utadanga Road. And later on when you get the opportunity to go to Calcutta, you must go and see that place. Because it was there that Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was preaching, and our Abai, Abai Prabhu at that time he was had not he was still a grihasta, still a householder, married man with young children, and he came there, and he and immediately he walked in the door, and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati saw this Abai and with his friend, he said, "You're a nice young man." Why don't you preach the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the world? Immediately, and, and probably, oh, oh. <laughs> it was a shock, you know. But at that time, Prabhupada describes he was a follower of Gandhi, so he was in his Gandhi, his Kadi, Gandhi followers, the Kadi cloth, and he would say, well, our country is not independent yet. We first have to get independence. And then we can spread Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati argued back, No, you are wrong. The message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cannot wait for some political adjustment. So, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati powerfully argued and defeated all of Bhaktivedanta Swami's arguments and told him, you should take this up. So Prabhupada describes, he said, I, I was impressed. He said, I was deeply impressed. But at that time, he said, I was a young man. I had young children. I could not do anything. 
but later on he'd moved to Allahabad, and it was the year 1933, and the Gaudiya was spreading. 1922, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati had just begun preaching, but then they moved around India, the open centers, and they came to Allahabad, and they made a center there. Allahabad today is called Prayagraj, and Prabhupada had a business there called Prayag Pharmacy, and the Gaudiya Math devotees came there, and we said, we heard you're a pious man, you're a religious man, and we're opening a temple here. We wanted to tell you, we wanted you to help us, to support us. And then Prabhupada remembered how he had met Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. And 1933 he got initiation. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati gave him first and second initiation. And at that time also he told him that he should study very carefully the, nec the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which later on Prabhupada wrote as the nectar of devotion. So that was 1933. 1936, we have the disappearance of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. So Srila Pra our founder Acharya tells us he only met his spiritual master four or five times, but he never forgot his instructions. And instructions like, if you ever get money, use it to print books. Very important. So uh, Prabhupada did that when he went to America. Whatever money he got, he would print books. He didn't worry too much about temples. In Prabhupada's time, we had we opened Vrindavan, Vrindavan temple was opened, and then Bombay was opened. But Mayapur, Prabhupada told Ambarish Prabhu that this is your project, you should develop Mayapur. So we have today the temple coming up under Ambarish Prabhu. He donated the main donor for the construction of the Mayapur project. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he wanted that the devotees should all work together to push on Krishna consciousness. When doctors would tell them, don't preach so much, you're putting more strain on your heart. He said, what's the purpose of living if I cannot preach? He said, better to have Hari Bhajan and poor health then good health and no hurry budget. So he was never on the material platform and uh, he actually departed from the world in Kalkara at the Godiamat temple, Bhag Bazar temple, which is a very nice building which was opened in the time of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. So he departed from the world there. At that time he was one of the, he had the devotees sing the song Sri Rupa Manjari Padma. It was a favorite song of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. He liked to hear it. And interesting, he had the devotee sing the song. The devotee who sang the song was not very, he was not really the best kirtanir. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati considered that his mood of devotion was the best. So he was not so much concerned with the, the musical presentation, but the devotional presentation meant more to him. So he departed from the world there in Calcutta, and then later on, a few days later, they brought his body out from Calcutta. They brought his body out here to Mayapur and was placed in Samadhi down the road where we see it today. So this is some brief incidents from the life of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati and his mission. He is the pioneer. One of, certainly he took on, we say Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a pioneer of preaching Krishna consciousness in the Western world. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati continued 
following in that mood of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Sending people to foreign countries. They went to Burma. At that time, Bangladesh was still part of India, so that regularly people were going to Bangladesh. He wanted so much to see Krishna consciousness spread around the world, and we hope that somehow the efforts which were going on today are pleasing to him. Are there any questions? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, right. That's right, yes. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati also had this program. The devotees study the Shastra. You can see, if you get Bhakti Vikasi's book about Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, you can see there they've got some of the questions which were there for the Bhakti Shastri students. Hmm. Yes, Prabhu? Thank you so much for this wonderful class on Bhaktisthan Sosati Goswami. Maharaj, as you see the parampara altars, so from Bhaktisthan Sosati Goswami, we see that saffron cloth robes being wired by the who is also taking up this preaching mission. Rightly. The okay. disciplic succession? Yes. On the altar? Well, the disciplic succession on the altar is based on shiksha not on Diksha. And that was how Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati arranged it like that. That he put the picture of Jagannath Das Babaji and then Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Now Bhaktivinoda Thakur was initiated by another person, right? But it was Jagannath Das Babaji who was his Shiksha Guru. And when, they, when Bhaktivinoda Thakur established the Yoga Peeth, it was Jagannath Das Babaji who had come there to confirm that this is actually the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So you could say that the disciplic succession on the altar is to in remind us that Shiksha is more important than Diksha. That while Diksha is necessary, that Shiksha is even more important. And again, the relationship between Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Gorkishor Das Babaji is not Diksha, but it is Shiksha. So, is it from Bhakti Siddhanta Sustri Goswami Bad? Uh, he took that sannyas initiation from directly from his Guru, Guru Maharaj. So, from that day only, he took up that saffron robes, saffron cloths. Previously, it was white rose in the form of Babaji dress. C can you tell me what he's saying? After he took sannyas, oh. that time he wore the, the saffron. Yes, after he took sannyas, then he put saffron on. Yes, when he first got initiation from Gorkishodas, but we never heard anything about him putting on saffron. But certainly when he became sannyasi, then he would put on saffron. Now, wearing saffron cloth was a privilege which was given to brahmacharis for the, for the purpose of preaching. That it will help them to, be, to go out and preach. That people will give more respect if they see you in the saffron cloth. They will think, oh, they will think of you like a sannyasi almost, you see. Even though you're brahmachari, but because you wear saffron, they will give you more honor and respect. They will under, because they have that tra tradition, that's a, understood. You wear saffron cloth, that means you're practicing celibacy, you're a brahmachari or something, so they'll give you honor and respect. So it's good for preaching. It's meant to be as an opportunity to help in preaching. Yes, yes, certainly. He 
took sannyas, right? Sannyas is also Varnashram Dharma, part of that. He didn't try to become Paramahamsa. Although Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Gorkishore Das Babaji, they were Paramahamsas. They'd taken Babaji initiation, but he didn't want to put himself on their level. And he, would, he showed the example of humility, perfect humility. Although he was initiating people, he never thought himself to be the master and the controller. He said, if one thinks, I am guru, then you're actually guru. Guru means cow. You're, you're not guru, you're guru. means you're, you're not a spiritual teacher, you're just a stupid cow. So if you think like that, you know, then you're guru. So, and when he would see disciples, and they would, if they offered obeisances, he would also offer obeisances, and he would always say, Dasos me, I am your servant. And he would think like that, that the disciples are all sent by my spiritual master just to help me. And we saw that also from our own Srila Prabhupada. He said that you're all sent by my spiritual master to help me. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Maharaj, uh, for your nice class. Dhanavad Pranam. Maharaj. Uh, next month, uh, Navadit Dham Parikrama is coming so, and you participated and you laid a lot of Parikramas in your life. I've seen the videos. So how I can or we can convince myself to take the Parikrama because it's a very painful process. It is by walking. So please tell something, Maharaj. <laughs> well, well, you don't have to walk. You don't have to walk. We understand that not everybody can walk. And I think this year we're not going to do a lot of walking also. Mostly we'll be traveling on boats or by vehicles, I think, because we're only going out for five days, so we won't be doing a lot of walking. But, you know, Parikrama, uh, the idea is to come and hear about the holy place. The walking part is not so important. You don't worry about that. If you want, to, there'll be autos and rickshaws and things there. They're always there. They're happy. They get some business. They can make some money, you know, and we don't mind. Nobody's going to complain, oh, what are you doing? You, you have to walk. No, no, no. We're, our parikramas are quite relaxed. <laughs> you know, you want to ride in a rickshaw, no problem. We're happy you come. Just come along and hear the katas. That's the real purpose. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hare, Hare Krishna.